Hi, Tan here. Today I want to explore what happens if I mount one of my Feiyu Tech WG2 gimbal onto my quadcopter. And what that actually achieves is as the quadcopter is flying forward and doing the natural rolls that it does, the gimbal is constantly correcting the camera. Now so that you're fully informed, GoPro Hero 11 has already released linear 360 horizon correction. While with the Hero 10 and the 9, you need a max lens mod and you can activate the 360 horizon leveling. And although this records in 5.3K at your selected frame rate, linear mode always comes at a cost of some amount of resolution as well as not having a wide field of view maintained. And on the other hand, besides software also has some fixes for this. Gyroflow actually has the horizon lock checklist that you can select for your footage. And what it does is it zooms into the footage and corrects all of the roll or dutch axes that's in your footage but if i were to mount it on a wg2 gimbal i can record it in wide or super view with the full freedom of getting as wide of a footage that i want now previously i did try to attach the wg2 with the gopro hero 7 onto my protec 35 but unfortunately, the nature that is a 3.5 inch Cinewhoop means that smaller props, smaller motors, meaning that the quad was underpowered to do the job. There was bobbing, lack of authority. So that's why I'm here back trying to put it on this quad instead. This is the Source 1 V5 that I've been flying for shoots. It is mostly uncrashed. And this is the gimbal I'm working with, Feiyu Tech WG2 gimbal. It comes stock with this mount, which is meant to hold a GoPro Hero 7 and below. Which is why I ordered online this uh, GoPro Hero 9 mounting plate instead. Now this is the WG2. It is not the WG2X, which this mount is recommended for. The WG2X has this like screw plate on the right side of the rig. So currently, my GoPro just constantly droops. And when I turn it on, won't lock. But if I add the weight, it does fine. So now I just need to basically mount this on. So I'm just going to do it with some electrical tape. I guess it's correct. Yeah, it's it's doing what I want it to. Okay, let's just carry on. And I printed this PETG to actually hold the gimbal in place, while this other side is what I would be mounting onto the Source One V5's bottom side as so. And what I also have is these bunch of high heel. They're just poles that keeps the thing up, and I don't scratch the action camera or gimbal. Let's get right to it. Right, that part is done. So now I'm gonna move on to the high heels for my motors. There it is. High heels for my quad. And in terms of mounting, the WG2 actually has two like quarter screw mounts. If I were to place this on this rig, like so, the one that's on the side, it's gonna be facing the frame, so I can't screw that. But I intend to quarter screw from the base of it. Then now it should sit comfortably. Double confirmation, I have this extremely long LiPo strap that I bought because I don't entirely trust the three different parts. It's a little bit on and off. Well, it's correcting the front and back really well. Now it's performing okay. Look at that. All right, so I'm all set up to fly now. So one little thing about this WG2 gimbal, but if I hand adjust it and hold it for a few seconds, it is going to lock at an angle, at whatever tilt angle it is. So it will just constantly lock towards that. And this might create some cool opportunities for us to try that only a gimbal FPV drone can do. Feel the muscles of the quadcopter flexing, struggling. The thing flying for the camera.
I'm gonna go for one that's facing a negative 20. I think I can get a little bit of elevation. My FPV camera is still looking up, but my but my GoPro is probably facing downwards. So by right, I hope that right now I'm having a perfect look. It's always good to check your DVR a little bit. Now that I know, my tolerance should just be a little touch of a tilt down or upwards. Rolling right. Higher perspective, roll right. Roll right. Three minutes. Side tracking shot. Side tracking shot into an FPV shot. Let's try a break. And reverse. One more time. Maybe I found a finally found a good use for this. It's a break and a reverse into a wide shot again. Oh that that might have turned out interesting. Now, as you can see, it's very aerodynamically challenged, but I still want to see how far I can push this quad. If I were to remove the gimbal and just mount the GoPro on top, how would this freestyle quad perform? So if I go on shoot, I can just simply take out the gimbal and fly with GoPro. Oh, that feels so much better to fly. <laughs> oh my god, stop! <laughs> now that I'm feeling this is like, you know what, fuck the gimbal. Let's just keep flying FPV the way it is. So a gimbal FPV quadcopter doesn't seem like the best idea. The little gimbal might not have enough of the motor power to actually correct for G-forces like that. Either also I might not have built it optimally or might not have been flying it to its fullest potential, but I actually don't think it's worth investing or going out of your way to buy this tool for your arsenal. I think you're better off getting a Mavic and just like you know just getting these shots that way more reliably and safely on set although that last shot with the whole like swooping into the grandstand and then swooping out does seem a little bit interesting it's maybe something i will want to explore in the future anyway that's gonna do it for this video thanks for watching no matter where you're from all around the world it's just it's one unique one special vibe